Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Q4 FY24 results conference call of Epigril Limited, hosted by NK Global Financial Services. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end of today's presentation. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Meet Ora from MK Global Financial Services. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Epigral Limited's uh, Q4 and FY24 results conference call. We would like to thank the management for giving us this opportunity to host them. On this call, we are joined with Epigral's management, represented by Mr. Malik Patel. Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Kaushal Soparkar, Executive Director, Mr. Sanjay Jain, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Milin Kotecha, Investor Relations. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Malik Patel to initiate the proceedings with his opening remarks, post which we will have a Q&A session. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Meet. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the call to discuss Epigral's Quarter 4 FY24 performance. I believe you had an opportunity to view the earning presentation that was released earlier today. We have witnessed a recovery in the chemical segment, though it was slightly slow. We do see a positive outlook on a sequential basis as well as coming quarters. The recovery majorly is on the demand side, but the relations have still been subdued. We believe that the demand scenario has improved and is expected to further improve from here onward with improvement in realization. Long-term outlook for the chemical and manufacturing industry looks positive. In this challenging environment, Epigral performed better on the sequential basis in every quarter starting from quarter two FY24. On a yearly basis, Epigral delivered a volume growth of 15% in FY24, majority of this growth coming from derivatives and the specialty business. In quarter four, FY24, Epigral's sales volume grew by 9% year on year, and this volume growth is majorly coming from the new projects commissions in FY23. This resulted in revenue growth of around 11% and the pet growth of 56%. As the business improved, our EBITDA margin also improved from 21% in quarter 1 FY24 to 30% in quarter 4 FY24, leading to the 25% margin for full year FY24. In line with our focus on diversifying our business model in quarter 4 FY24, revenue contribution from derivatives and specialty business crossed 50% mark and reached to 52%. For the year as a whole, revenue contribution from derivatives and the specialty business reached to 45% versus 30% in FY23. This strategy of diversification of entering into the various import substitute products and the catering to various industries played a key role in Epigral being resilient in this tough FY24 year. Our project commission in FY23 contributed partially in FY24 and led us to a volume growth of 15% in FY24. The project commission in FY23 and projects that we will commission in FY24 like CPVC raising capacity of additional 45,000 ton per annum, chlorodolium value chain facility and CPVC compound facility will drive volume growth for the coming years. The expansion project related to chlorodolium value chain and the CPVC compound are almost ready. We are in the final stage and we expect to be completed in the first half of FY2025. In in FY24, Board of Directors has also proposed a final dividend of 50% on face value of rupee 10 and rupee 5 per equity share. We are focused on expanding derivatives and the specialty business and diversifying the business model and the strengthening our integrated complex. We believe this strategy will bring us consistent growth in coming years and will lead us to create value for our stakeholders. I now hand over to the call to Mr. Sanjay Jain, our CFO, who will take us through the financials. Thank you, Malik. Let me take you the financials for the quarter. The company has achieved capacity utilization of 83% in quarter 4 FY24, 
again 81% quarter 3 FY24. Sales volume grew by 9% on year on year basis and 4% on quarter on quarter basis. Revenue increased by 11% to rupees 525 crore in quarter 4 FY24 as compared to rupees 472 crore in quarter 3 FY24. This is backed by volume growth in chloral alkali, CPG raisin and improvement in the relation for chloral alkali. On year on year, the revenue decreased by 7% mainly on account of drop in realization across all the products. In quarter 4 FY24, revenue contribution from derivative and specialty business increased to 52% as compared to 44% in quarter 3 FY24. The same was 38% in quarter 4 of last year. EBITDA grew by 27% to Rs. 155 crore from Rs. 123 crore in quarter 3 FY24. This majorly on on account of increase in the volume that led to efficiency and improvement in spread. EBITDA margin stood at 30% in quarter 4 FI24 against 26% in quarter 3 FI24 and against 28% in quarter 4 of last financial year. PAT grew by 55% to Rs. 77 crore in quarter 4 FI24 from Rs. 49 crore in quarter 3 FI24. PAT margin stood at 15% versus 10% in quarter 3 FI24. Now let me discuss about financials for financial year FI24. Capacity utilization remained almost at the same level of 78%. FI24, the revenue decreased by 12% to Rs. 1929 crore from Rs. 2188 crore in FI23. This is on account of decrease in utilization across all the divisions. Otherwise, volume grew by 15% in FI24, majorly from derivative and specialty business. Realization dropped significantly in the range of 12 to 45% FI24 compared to FI23. We believe it is a bottom level and likely to improve from year onwards. In FI24, revenue contribution from derivative and specialty business increased to 45% as compared to 30% in FI23. This is in line with our focus on increasing revenue from derivative and specialty chemicals. EBITDA decreased to Rs. 482 crore from Rs. 689 crore in last year. Even in, even in this tough year, we are able to maintain EBITDA margin of 25%. PAT stood at Rs. 196 crore with a margin of 10%. Our return on cap capital employed for FI24 stood at 17%. This is after considering the capital working progress as an employee, capital employee. Excluding the capital working progress, the ROC stands at 21%. And if we analyze EBIT of quarter 4, FI24, then ROC will, would be like would like be at 24%. Our net debt stood at Rs. 960 crore as of 31st March 24, against Rs. 863 crore as of 31st March 2023. The increase of the 98 crore in net debt is majorly due to CAPEX. The company has spent Rs. 405, 405 crore on capital expenditure, funded partially from the borrowed fund and partially from the internal approvals. We can open the floor for the Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Priyank Chida from Valium Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Congratulations, team, on the strong performance. And our overall strategy on import substitution is clearly started showing positive results. Uh, my first question is on caustic soda industry dynamics. If you see from FY22 to FQ to FY24, which is September 24, India was a net exporter while uh, starting from FY, from last quarter, we have become net importer. And for the whole year, our imports have doubled at 2 lakh tons. So what is the reason uh, while we have seen, started seeing a huge imports coming up uh, and exports have actually dried up? So when can we see this in this dynamic getting changed to India becoming a net exporter. 
Yeah. So uh, if you see the many our alumina capacity in last entire financial year has increased in India, and that is uh, additional demand of costing on the eastern part of India. So if you see the specific the eastern part of India, the costing demand has picked up, uh, and that keep continuing even in this year as well. So that is the major reason our import volume has gone up. Definitely, the export has reduced. The major reason is uh, because of the the global uh, scenario, which is not great. Definitely, our domestic market is doing great, but the export market, even still in Europe and in US, is still reviving. Uh, it is still not back to the original level, even pre-COVID level as well. So that is the reason the export is not encouraging right now. But yeah, but we are better than the quarter three level right now in terms of the realization, and probably here onwards will improve, you know, going on just on quarter on quarter basis. Okay, and uh, uh, so how much of the savings we have seen in the quarter or a year uh, in terms of cost reduction because of the coal prices coming down? Uh, in any qualitative way, if you can help, if you can help us, what has been the cost savings on the, in the caustic soda segment? Definitely, the coal price is going down, but it is not a significant. You know, the basic coal price is going down, but at the same time, the the supply chain and the logistic cost has gone up, and and the the currency movement has started moving up. So uh, it is not a major saving has started coming, but people you know who have a focus on the solar and wind in the past who has invested that benefit has started coming reflection in the balance sheet in this year so there is a change in the slight advantage in terms of the solar and wind hybrid project has commissioned in most of the companies like in apical also we have commissioned 18.34 megawatt and we have realized i think 6 to 7 months a gain in terms of advantage in terms of power cost but still, would it be 10% of kind of a saving within caustic soda raw material cost as an overall basket would be would be seen because of the coal prices going down? Can we more? Can we roughly estimate that? Yeah, you can say that, but it's not substantial. Yeah. No no problem. Uh, for uh, coming to the derivatives part on the epic chlorohydrin, uh, what has been the utilization for in Q4? We were at 55% roughly in Q3. Uh, and while we understand all the other derivatives continue to run at 100%, so this is the only segment which has contributed positively in terms of revenue growth uh, for uh, derivatives. Yeah, uh, so we have reached to almost 60% uh, running in quarter four. Uh, Epichlorohydrin and uh, definitely uh, uh, still uh, Europe also we have opened up and we have started doing the uh, ex uh, export to the Europe, uh, European territories also, and we have done our bulk shipment as a we are second vessel we have done in this year, uh, this month. And uh, US, we are still uh, in touch, still uh, the market is not open up for us, but I think we are looking for a big contract in the, in the second half of this year and the coming years uh, for the European market, uh, for the US market. So still that uh, we are working on that path in the Europe and uh, I think the volume may will increase going forward from here onwards on quarter on quarter basis as our export market is picking up. Okay, so what we understood earlier was that Epichloro as a segment sees around 80-85,000 tons worth of imports happening into this uh, country now, while we have started doing exports. So would exports be very high in terms of realization value? Uh, and how does this imports uh, versus our exports, uh, you know, uh, pair out in terms of the industry dynamic? The ECH market is going up. All the domestic capacity is picking up. Uh, they are expanding their capacity, uh, and they are increasing their volume uh, on month on month basis. Uh, another two big expansion is going to complete probably by end of this year or beginning of next year. 
so uh, definitely our epoxy capacity which has uh, you know compared to before 2 years we are going to be almost the almost double the size uh, of what we have the capacity 2 years back in india so definitely our capacity our, our ech demand will go up in india within country itself going forward and the market which is catering by epoxy resin is majorly by renewable energies which is a windmill which is high in demand right now second is in the adhesive sector and third is in automotive sector so all three segments is growing in double digit in india so we are expecting very high growth in next next coming coming five years or coming decade for this particular product and we have seen the similar growth in china since 2011 to 2020 same kind of growth has happened in china also but we don't expect that much volume as china but at least compared what we are here you know in today's situation at least the demand will pick up almost double from here in next 5 years and are the realizations too different uh, for exports versus domestic or are are, are they import parity see uh, uh, export has uh, definitely it has a uh, uh, realization is better and we have a, uh, but there is a infrastructure uh, also we need to create in europe in europe as well we have done a local storage tank and we have focused and even in the us also we have kept a storage tank so there is a cost also additional cost also and there is a additional transportation cost also but in the same time we have additional you know there is a advantage in terms of the realization also got it uh, coming to cpvc compounds uh, the forward integration that we are doing from resins to compound uh, does this uh, add any value to the spreads or pnl of epigral or we are in different selling resins or compound based on whatever the customer demand would be so cpvc compound again the margins will be in the range of what we have for the around 25% put together so it's not like uh, there is uh, we are doing just for the sake of it it's actually 20 uh, it will be around 25% margin what we have for the company put together so compared to resins uh, the compounds would have a higher margin is what the message that i should take on no 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 no, no. it's it not like that not like that so resin uh, if you consider starting from the resin and to till compound the margin will be the almost similar rate so got it the compound as a separate and independent project because uh, as we are our capacity is increasing from 40 uh, 45000 tons per annum which is 1.5 times the capacity which we had so some of the customers which we are not catering right now we would like to cater and they are buying only compound so for them we are creating this infrastructure and we see cpvc compound as a part of cpvc resin only definitely it is a value addition but in terms of overall margin starting from the uh, resin to compound uh, not resin pvc resin to compound we are considering whatever you know we are expecting in terms of the company's uh, overall margin is 25% we will continue with that yeah got it just a last question from my side on cpvc uh, the incremental capacity and chlorotoluene capacity that would come up uh, say in next 3 4 months what kind of utilizations should we think of uh, in fy25 uh, as we scale up so additional capacity of cpvc resin that we are uh, we are commissioning 45000 tons that will uh, take around 4 uh, to 5 months to uh, kind of uh, reach optimum so maybe in the q4 uh it will reach around optimum and also for the chlorotoluenes uh we expect that to reach optimum maybe end of q4 fy25 so in the chlorotoluene we have a three different blocks uh, all blocks will in in next you uh, know next 3 to 4 months time we are going to commission one by one all different blocks and and all entire chlorotoluene project will be ready for commissioning everything total all put together will be commissioned by by end of quarter 2 and start um, i think we are expecting to really you know uh, product started moving from the quarter 4 onwards and some kind of our optimal optimal utilization is somewhere around 65 70% mark right 
Yes, yes. We are expecting around to reach around 60% by end of quarter four. Got it. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. If you have any follow-up questions, you can rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Rohit Sinha from Suniti Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for taking my question, sir. Uh, congratulations for a very good set of numbers. Uh, so, some of my questions are already asked. So, few uh, others are like, uh, so if we if we see the margins in this quarter, uh, there is, uh, I mean, so one of the best margin we have in the uh, last four five quarters. And uh, still, I think uh, uh, ECH and CPVC yet to uh, see price improvement as well as uh, utilization level to go go up uh, going forward. So, uh, I mean, uh, as we are talking about around 25 percent kind of uh, the margin going forward, I'm just uh, expecting that uh, given this kind of uh, margin and the scope of improvement is still lying there. So we should be still, I uh, think, uh, we managed to report better than 25% margin for 25 uh, also. Uh, so just from that, uh, how how we are seeing uh, an improvement to uh, sustain uh, for the coming quarters? Yeah. So uh, in terms of the margin, we recently commissioned the CPVC capacity as well. So it will take time to... Uh, Revamp. So, uh, uh, I mean, the revamp as in uh, it will to take right, reach to optimum level. So, uh, that's where we expect that year put together, we will be somewhere around in the range of 25% kind of a margin. And uh, if everything in terms of all the products stand in a strong position uh, in this FI25, then the margins can go on upward direction as well. But uh, we believe that 25% in the range would be something which is definitely sustainable. Okay. Okay. And and uh, in in this product uh, alone plant, uh, I guess we are uh, slightly uh, one quarter behind in, in terms of commissioning. So are we still in line with our uh, world uh, targeted revenue for F24? And are the optics are uh, aligned for that? So, uh, Rohit, you know, uh, we are uh, going to commission because we have a three different blocks in the chlorotoline project. So, one by one, we are going to start doing it from this quarter onwards. So, complete chlorotoline project will be completely commissioned by quarter two, as we have mentioned in our presentation. And, uh, you know, the product will be all three different phases, uh, all three different category products will be out in the market from this end of this quarter onwards in a phase wise. So definitely we are expecting the start generating the revenue from the third quarter onwards slowly and gradually, but eventually the as optimum capacity we will reach in quarter four, end of quarter four, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, and one lastly, uh, as uh, on the pricing side, as we are seeing that uh, there has been some improvement in the public prices, but still uh, the ETH and CPC and uh, other products are still uh, lagging behind. So, just wanted to know your uh, take on how industry is shaping right now, how demands are, as you have already indicated, that demands are slightly improving, and how uh, this uh, should actually translate into improvement in the prices uh, going forward, or whether uh, I mean, from when we should should be. Not clear. I mean, we are not able to understand the question. So, so uh, hello, uh, am I audible now? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so just on the uh, pricing side, as uh, in caustic we have seen some bit of improvement, uh, but other products are uh, lagging right now. So, how uh, how uh, how you are seeing the overall industry, or uh, what is your take on how you know, we'll be seeing the price improvement in the other products and even in the caustic side also, I guess this is a first leg of movement, still a lot of, uh, uh, compared to uh, five-year average also, still we are slightly on the lower side. Uh, so, 
so how we, we should be seeing uh, the coming quarters for uh, the price improvement in the products? So in the in terms of caustic soda, if you ask, you know, every company has a different calculation in terms of the energy cost, which is major driving factor right now. So that there is a change as you know, slightly change in the coal price. Definitely, that will advantage to the caustic soda, and the local demand has picked up in in India, and that is also giving an additional uh, you know uh, in terms of the support to the caustic soda business. And we are expecting in this year also. I think we are not expecting big jump in terms of the as a business of the chloroalkali business, but slightly variation from here will go on on based on the quarterly basis. You know, in terms of the domestic demand has picked up further because still the do export market has not picked up as as is required. You know, as as in the COVID level or the pre-COVID level. So that as I think will take a. Uh, Another three months to six month time, and that's how the overall caustic demand will picked up in the industry, in the domestic industries as well, going forward. Okay, okay, that is from my side. Thank you, and that's a plus. Thank you. Before we take the next question, just a reminder to participants, please use your handsets while asking a question and refrain from using the speaker mode. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Noel Vas from Union Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have just uh, one question. So over the past uh, few years, I think as per the presentation is mentioned that there's been 400 crores of capex for two years and it's FY25 the plan is for 300 crores, right? Yes, that's right. Yes. So I just wanted to get a sense of uh, number one, these uh, capacities which have been now built up for the past two, three years, including FY25, how long will it take for them to fully reach utilization? Uh, if you can give some details on that, would be good. And uh, what kind of asset turns can we expect from them? So the the capacity that we uh, commissioned, I mean, recently we commissioned CPVC resin capacity of additional 45,000 tons. And now in a quarter one and quarter two, we will commission the protolumes and the CPVC compound capacity. So FY26 will be a year where all the products will be at optimum. And again, the asset turnover would be in the range of 1.2, 1.3 kind of uh, even after once we commission these plants. Okay. Yes. Uh, so just to understand, I think whatever is being uh, done so far, that will all be ramping up into FY25 and 26, right? I think then we'll hit full utilization on the capacities, right? I think that would be a good way of looking at it. Yeah. So uh, the capacities that we commission in this year will contribute partially, whereas FY26, we believe whatever we have commissioned in FY25 will reach optimum in the Q4 itself. So FY26, we will enjoy the full, you can say, optimize, optimum level capacity utilization for all the products that we have. Okay. So, but, uh, I mean, if we were to follow this logical conclusion, then we would need to start another growth growth plan in FY26 itself, right? So, in what direction would we be looking at potentially? Yeah. So, our focus is more towards investment is going towards more on derivatives and the specialty side. So, we are looking for... Uh, more investment on the downstream chemicals, what we are manufacturing right now, and some of the value-added product from what we are producing right now. So our focus is going to be what we have generated in this financial year. We have no in quarter four we have reached to almost 50% revenue from the derivatives and specialty. That will keep continue our focus and investment, and eventually we would like to reach to a 70% derivatives and specialty and 30% from the floral business. In, in probably in next two years time or three years time. Yes, uh, thank you. Yeah, we'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shaurya Shah from Equiria Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so I wanted to, I just had one question, like uh, what are the current uh, CP, what is the current CPVC pricing and where do we see it going forward, uh, say in FY25 in uh, kilogram terms? The current CPVC prices is around, uh, it will be somewhere in the range of around 130, 130,000 kind of price. And again, we believe that it might 
uh, stage jaise aur it might improve from year on maybe in fy25 but again it's so difficult to convey any number as of now okay okay yeah that's it from me sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sudarshan from prosperity wealth management please go ahead yeah uh, hi sir uh, will you be able to give us uh, segmental margins given that we are uh, going to be closer to 50% from derivative segment and q1 and q2 will have further uh, derivative commission so again uh, we actually not don't share the product wise or the segment wise margin so company put together whenever we select any product the margins for any product will be in the range of 25% and again uh, but when the we commission the product initially it's not in that range it is at lower because once the plant reach optimum then you can enjoy that kind of margins so initially we we it will be at low but overall if things run on optimum basis then 25% is something a better margin can be generated and roc will be in the range of uh, uh, 24 25 so our focus is towards the roc but uh, it's difficult to give a number uh, uh, segment wise Okay, sir. All right. Thank you for that. And uh, coming to your uh, chlorotoluene and base value chain, so can you give a, a rough estimate of what kind of uh, products and uh, the volume and value of the domestic uh, business, and will those be import substitutes? So it's an import substitute product. So the chlorotoluenes that the product that we are entering are all import substitute products, and again, will be the first in India. and the market for that is again growing in a double digit percentage and it's not like just one particular product to give you an exact volume wise number it's a multiple products it's uh, currently in the first phase we are coming coming up with the product in the range of around 10 to 15 products so uh, that's what i can say it's growing in the range of double digit percentage and it's all import substitute as of now and we are the first in india to start this products okay so all the three uh, uh, phases would be a multiple purpose plan right yes so as uh, molik sir earlier said uh, it's into three uh, blocks so one of the block is a multi purpose plant okay so other two would be dedicated for a single product so basically see we as a company always believe in being an integrated plant so we will start from the basics like from the chlorine and toluene and then all the way going up to the multi purpose plant so it's that way it it is uh, uh, separated in a three blocks okay. so it's an integrated plant it's not just like n1 minus 1 kind of thing oh. so uh, what is the capex incurred till uh, now for this particular laboratory in the capacity as yes, for capex uh, 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 i mean what will be somewhere in the range of 220 250 kind of thing okay. Okay, sir. And uh, so this incremental margins, this four percent during this quarter, is it from a caustic segment or incremental four percent margin is a combination of many things. It's not just only caustic, because as we have bit improved on the CPVC side, also capacity utilization, caustic has has a bit uh, has also gone up. So it's a combination of all products which has led to the improvement in the margins. Okay. It's not just one particular product. Okay, and uh, can you give us electricity cost as a percentage of uh, uh, your costing? Uh, it is uh, you know for costing the power cost is around the fifty fifty five percent in total. Fifty five percent will be the electricity cost. Yeah, electricity. Okay, okay, thank you. That's it from my end. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepesh Sancheti. from mania finance please go ahead hi am i audible yes okay uh just wanted to know what is going ahead what is the revenue mix the company would like to have uh, in terms of derivatives and specialties uh, to chloro alkalis will it be 50 50 or will it be uh, will you want to uh, go for uh, 70 30 so going going in fi 25 i want to know for fi 25 and fi 27 so uh, definitely our focus on the last four years we are keep investing only into the not last couple of years we have started focusing on the derivatives and specialty we are keep investing there and going forward also our capex will be in the derivatives and specialty only so as our target is reached to 50% which was there now we have achieved in quarter 4 and going forward i think we are going to achieve probably now next target we have kept it is 70 30 So 70% will be derivatives and specialty, and 30% will be in the chloroalkyl business. 
going forward. That's the target uh, we wanted to achieve going forward as we are investing continuously on the derivatives and specialty segment. So I can assume that F by FY27, when all your expansions will come to uh, commissioning, uh, that time we will be able to achieve 70-30 or will it be before? No, that time I think we are able to achieve 70 yeah, yeah. Yeah, that will be able to. So, F, uh, so FI25, how much, do you, how much should uh, an investor expect? So, FI24, we have made the derivatives contributed 45% of revenue. So, maybe FI25, it can be in the range of 55 and all over side and upper side, it can be 60. Great, great. Okay. And uh, the second question is, I uh, wanted to know your debt uh, quarter on quarter wise and year on year wise because the interest cost in this quarter is significantly low. So I wanted to know what is the reason, uh, main reason for this. Okay. Uh, with regard to our debt numbers, uh, uh, the total debt of the company is 960 crore for, as of 31st March 24, which was 863 crore in uh, uh, 31st March 23. And the interest cost, which is low in quarter four compared to quarter four last year, this is on basis mainly on account of the positive impact of mark to market provision, and on the and second is on account of the repayment of the uh, debt. Sorry, uh, I, I didn't get the second part. Second is uh, second is on account of the repayment of the debt. Repayment of the debt. So, uh, what was the uh, uh, net debt quarter on quarter wise and uh, year on year wise? Because the net debt you mentioned in the uh, right now was 960 crores, 60 crores. So, quarter on quarter, how much was it? So, uh, that, uh, if you compare to the year on year, this is the incremental of the net debt, the 98 crores, basically on account of the CAPEX loan that we have taken for the expansion project. Otherwise the, otherwise, the repayment is there around, around 240 crores, and that is the main, for the whole year. So that is the main reason our interest costs have drastically gone down in quarter four. This is before. How much working? And working capital also, this is we have increased our operations uh, drastically, so our working capital requirement also has gone up compared to uh, last year and this year uh, in the range of, you know, around 70 to 100 crore rupees. Working capital has gone down. Yeah, it has gone up in terms of absolute. Okay. Amount. Yeah, because the, the in terms of the products that we have entered and the size of the revenue has gone up. Okay. And what is the cost of debt? Cost of debt as of this moment of time is around the 8.25, 8 8.40 sort of thing. Okay. Okay. And uh, what is the expansion month? Is it mainly uh, import substitution or uh, forward and backward integration? So it's a combination of both the things. Whenever we decide to enter into products, the first thing is we want to be into products which are first time in India where the market is growing. And second thing, where we can make our integrated complex much more stronger. So basically what we are producing, we can use as a raw model for the products. So these are the criteria when we select for any product to enter. Okay. Just one last question that what is the, uh, uh, I mean, how much revenue did we get from Make Money Organics? Because it's our, uh, I mean, it's our parent company. Uh, so how much was the revenue which we got from uh, Make Money Organics? So uh, just to let you know, uh, we were subsidiary of Make Money Organics. That was before May 2021. We got demerged from that company. Now it's a totally two independent company. And uh, when we say ethical and the numbers that you're seeing, it's of independent entity and there is no cross holding. So it's a totally independent company in that manner, and the revenue that is there, it's solely of the Epigral Limited. So, I mean, how much did we supply to make many organics? That is all I want to know. That way, okay. So again, the, the caustic soda and the chlorine is something which goes into almost all the industries. So to that extent, it has gone. I don't have that number readily in my hand, but it would be in the range of 10 to 11 percent. 10 to 11 percent of the caustic soda and the uh, of the chloralkali, not uh, of the total revenues. I mean, I, I, when I say 10 to 11 percent, that will be of the total revenue. Total revenues. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, what, what about our realizations, our realizations on all the products have gone down year on year and quarter on quarter. Then what has given the main boost uh, to our margins uh, in this quarter? Was it was the interest cost or was it something else? So again, uh, at the margins level, uh, the raw material prices have also a bit cooled off, uh, which were not as cooled off in Q1 and Q2, so it has been cooled off compared to the first half of FI24 in H2 of FI24, and that's where you can see a bit better 
realize i mean bit uh, better margins in the q4 fy24 any particular raw material which has cooled off uh, to a great extent no it's a combination of it for, for the various uh, raw material it's not specific to any specific product okay main raw material if you can just uh, i mean how much uh, percentage wise it, it has gone down quarter on quarter if you can just see again for every product like for chloral caustic soda then coal and salt is the raw material for epichloroethylene glycerin and for cpc it's pvc so again it's difficult to put but see being a further integrated and as we increase our capacity utilization for the new product that we have commissioned because when we commissioned the products in fy23 in fy24 initially uh, products were not running at optimum so now it has bit inched up so once we reach kind of optimum for the product that we have commissioned the ebitda is going to go up that is one thing second thing in terms of also the raw material prices uh, it helps a bit and also in few cases like caustic soda and in case of hydrogen peroxide the realizations has in bit inched up marginally in q4 yeah. okay thank you so much and uh, uh, very very happy with your results thank you again and uh, just uh, one uh, suggestion like generally you give a very uh, give a guidance in the investor presentation in the next three years we look at uh, this much uh, crores of revenues this time it was missing i mean before uh, in a couple of quarters if you can uh, mention it in the concord it will be great otherwise in the next uh, presentation we'll be looking forward to that so see considering the capex uh, that we have done and the projects that are expected to get commission uh, we can uh, uh, give a kind of a guidance in terms of the volume which would be in the growth of around 15% in terms of volume growth in fy25 it should be around that okay 15% volume growth yeah great thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of tarang from old bridge please go ahead hi uh, good evening congrats for a strong set of numbers just a couple of questions one um, on kpex right given that uh, uh, the cpvc plant has already been commissioned and you all are commissioning the uh, the chlorotoluene plant in q1 where do you where are you planning to deploy the 300 crores yes it can so 300 cr see basically we are going to do a continuous capex so the new projects that we will be entering into we might be announcing in a uh, couple of months that we will be entering into so the capex would be towards that okay and what's the maintenance capex for the entire infrastructure uh, maintenance capex is around about uh, 1 to 1 and a half percent of the total asset plus so i mean how much is the gross block as on 31st march 24 uh, it's about uh, it's about 2400 crores so roughly about 40 crores would that yeah. be the right way to look at it yeah it's right yeah. yeah okay and you did guide for a 15% volume growth right for fy25 yes yeah that's what we are targeting for okay thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nitesh dooth from dolat capital please go ahead uh yeah hi team thank you for the opportunity uh, so my first question is uh, on the chlorotoluene uh, capex <clears throat> so you mentioned the outlay of 250 crores uh, what is the likely asset turn there at uh, the current uh, uh, you know at the current prices and what would be the margin expectation there yeah so the capex uh, that we will be doing and out of that we are expecting the top line in the range of around 350 cr so so once we reach kind of optimum level so the expected top line from that will be around 350 cr so then the asset turnover will be somewhere in the range of 1.3 1.4 kind of thing and the margin expectation there uh, at a gross margin level maybe see again uh, as i said we don't share product to product wise margin but again that will be in the range of overall company's margin of 25% but again uh, initially yeah okay all right and uh, secondly on uh, the total investment in cpvc till date uh, for the 75000 tons capacity uh, can you share that uh, cpvc till okay uh, Total Sorry. investment for CPC for the total time. total investment on CPC till date uh, that's for seventy five thousand tons. 
So 75,000 tons all put together would be somewhere in the range of around 4, uh, 430 CR. All right. And lastly, on epic chlorohydrin also, I mean, what was the total investment there? So yeah, epic chloride in the capex was around 275 CR. All right. Uh, this is helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is on the uh, chlorine consumption. So based on the uh, projects that we are having, uh, what is the current level of uh, chlorine consumption captively? And what has been the realizations on the same uh, during the last quarter? and generally during the entire FI24. Thank you. Uh, clean, clean consumption is, uh, as of now is in the range of 65% of our total production. And uh, yeah, with regard to the relation of chlorine, uh, it is somewhere in the positive in quarter four, for, but for the year as a whole in the range of, uh, in the range of 1,000 uh, to 1,500 sort of thing. Negative, half for negative. All right, Sorry. right. Uh, yeah, thanks. And just uh, a light question. After all the uh, projects are completed, uh, what would be the captive uh, consumption of chlorine then? See, once all the projects will be reached at optimum level, uh, the CPVC and the chlorotoluene and, and the ECH, uh, then our chlorine consumption will be, I think, almost reached to around 80 to 85% captive. Captive plus pipeline customers, so 85%. So 15% it is still available for the market. Sure, sure, that's helpful. And uh, second question is uh, on the ECU. So if you, if you can just give us uh, an idea about how the ECU has fared in uh, current quarter, uh, the previous quarter and uh, for the full year. So ECU for the Q4 is around 29,000. Yeah, and uh, Q3 and uh, during uh, FI24 for the full year? So FI24 put together the So FI24 put together is around 28,500 kind of an ECU, full oh. year. Right, right. Fair enough. Uh, that's all from my side and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pinaki Banerjee from Ohm Capital Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is that uh, in FI24, year on year, there's been a 12% uh, fall in revenues, but uh, in balance sheet, we are finding that the trade receivables has gone by about 7.5%. So, so what can you please explain what is the reason for this? Okay, uh, so revenue, uh, yeah, the revenue which is down in the other basis uh, in the range of a 7 to 8%, but the relation, uh, but the receivables is on the upper side because the product which we are dealing as of now, particularly CPC and chlorotoluene, there the you know the credit period is somewhat uh, higher side compared to the two or three business. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and uh, secondly, uh, actually there has been a decrease in your power and fuel expenses, considering the fact that you are having the advantages of captive uh, plant. So, sir, actually, can you actually quantify how much uh, are you able to use it for captive consumption and how much you have to source it from outside? So currently, the uh, captive power plant that we have, that whatever it is coming, we are consuming in-house. And also, we have recent, uh, I mean, last year, we entered into the wind solar hybrid power plant. So we are okay. using that also as a uh, uh, power in terms of our total requirement. Okay. So 100% is in the max to your captive plant, right? Yeah, 100% yeah, through captive, uh, invest, uh, okay. captive okay. plant. And uh, uh, so can you give us the volume breakup of your chloralkali and their derivative segment? Uh, is it possible? Sorry. Uh, sir, can you give up the volume breakup of your chloral chloralkali and your derivatives uh, business? Uh, it will be difficult to give the product wise breakup. Okay. So, sir, ideally going forward, what will be the ratio of 50 50 and, uh, and rather and slowly it will be increasing to 60 40 like this? Yeah, eventually it will increase to 70-30. Okay, okay. So in how much time period? Two years? In next two and a half years, yeah. Okay, okay. So, and last question. Uh, and sir, the, the current Middle East tension, is it going to have any spillover effect on the business?
So India is a net importer of all the chemicals. So okay. definitely anything tension outside the India will definitely support the domestic manufacturing. Okay. okay. Fine. Got, got it. That's all for my answer. Thank you. And all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Balkrishna Bagasia from Exonown Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is related to ECH. So uh, recently, DCM Shriram and Rasim and uh, they have come up with the backward integration and manufacturing ECH. So regarding over on a global level from the India perspective, like out of uh, total capacity of uh, epoxy resins, how much would capacity would have the backward integration of ECH in terms of percentage? So as of now in India, uh, we are the only one in terms of manufacturing epichlorohydrin and the rest of the ECH is uh, uh, demand is met for imports only. Okay, I mean after one year or something, can you like, do you have any rough figure or something like that? Well, so once these plants the come on stream? Epoxy, yeah, uh, I think epoxy, one of the epoxy manufacturers is grafting and they have almost doubled their epoxy capacity recently and they have, announced, they have also announced the ECH plant as a backward integration and their plant will be commissioned probably by next year. That's what they have announced. So I don't know what is the status of the project right now, but yeah. But still after commissioning of that plant, they are going to be net buyers of epichloroidin, looking at that capacity expansion in this financial year. Okay. And another question is, uh, the uh, now Adani Enterprise has awarded EPC contract for uh, you know building the kind of uh, 2200 ton per day of uh, the kind of chloral curry plant. So is it going to have a like a positive impact considering the India is PV, uh, you know importing the PVC uh, to a big extent or it will have a negative impact on our company? No, no, definitely it is a positive impact because the PVC we are net importer and it will be support to the domestic PVC consumption. And uh, I think it is going to be help to the PVC industry who are the consuming PVC for, as a raw material. And in terms of caustic, there will be pressure a little bit, but uh, we believe that going forward, our alumina capacity in India is growing and the way the industry is picking up, uh, you know, so the growth will pick up and the demand will match probably in in couple of so the pressure will be there on the caustic side but not for a long term for a short term and i think this capacity which is announced by adani i think that is also going to come in a phase manner right they have they are, they are planning for commissioning in 15 months okay and uh, last question is like uh, electricity like the it is a big part of our cost so uh, I think earlier a participant asked uh, in this regard, but uh, I did not get the clarity. So out of the total electricity that we consume, what percentage we, you know, uh, consume, uh, what percentage we produce in-house plus uh, with the GV? And how, uh, what percentage we are buying from the grid? So it is 8 to 10% we are buying from the grid, and that is also cost is offset by the solar and wind, which we have done the hybrid project. Okay, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parth Mehta from Valium Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> First of all, congratulations on the good set of numbers. I just have uh, two bookkeeping questions, if you can help me, with the utilizations of caustic uh, or chloralkali plant. Uh, Presently, uh, for the quarter, is about 80, 80, 80, 85 percent. Okay. And full year, that would be? Uh, full year, for the, it's around the, the range of 77 percent sort of thing. Okay. Okay. And uh, if you could just help me with the current market prices for chloromethane, hydrogen peroxide, and epichlorohydrin. So chloromethane prices uh, would be somewhere in the range of around uh, 28 to 30,000, 28,000, 30,000. And hydrogen peroxide would be in the range of 25 to 27,000. 25 to? 27,000. 27. 27. And uh, epichloride? Again, it will be in the range of around 1 lakh. 
but hopefully. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ketan R. Chera from who's a retail investor. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, one the line for the current uh, participant uh, has dropped from the queue. We'll move on to the next question. The next question is from the line of Sudarshan from Prosperity Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, can you comment on the company's current uh, unutilized land that post the commissioning of CPVC compound and uh, chlorotrins? So, uh, you know, from the existing complex, we have uh, still another 25 to 30 percent land is available for the future expansion in the existing complex, which we have purchased in 2007-8. And above, additionally, you know, last year we have uh, purchased the additional land of almost 75 acre, which is almost close to uh, close to 400,000 uh, square meter land. We have purchased one kilometer from the existing complex for all our future expansion for next five years. Okay, so this 25 to 30 percent, can you give me an absolute number on it? That actual number actually is not in, uh, with, okay. in our hand right now, yeah. I understand, I understand. Thank you, Arjun. That's it from me. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Priyank Cheda from Valium Capital. Please go ahead. So just a question on, uh, I mean, good to see the dividend payouts. Uh, and since we are entering onto a very lean capex now going ahead and majority of the derivative capex is behind us, how should we look forward for the debt reduction plans? Uh, we are at 900 plus crores. Uh, what should be the debt reduction strategy going ahead? Yeah, so uh, what you said is right, considering the uh, cash flows that will be generating in FI25 over 26. Uh, the part of the amount will be going in the capex that will do, and the surplus fund that will be left will be used to reduce the debt of the company. Okay, and uh, uh, Milan, if you can help me on what would be the outstanding borrowing uh, from the holding company that we had borrowed uh, as on March 24 versus uh, March 23. Sorry, uh, the, the borrowing of the new company is almost within the tolerance limit only, but right now the figure is not there as of now. So the debt, uh, the preference share that was there was 150 CR as on last year, which has come down to 95 CR. Okay, okay so currently it has come down to 95 crores. Yes. And uh, would this be the priority to first repay that as a good corporate governance practice? Yes, it will be the priority to reduce that first. And not just that, the, the kind of debt that we have, it looks like that it has peaked out in this current year, maybe in the next six months. Thereafter, uh, with the cash flows coming in, it will only be coming down. And we go back to the earlier debt emitter levels of whatever we had said, which is still under two. We'll go back to even much lower than that as we go. Got it. So uh, whatever the total cash flows that we would be generating, majority uh, after the 300 crores of CAPEX, Everything would be paid as a debt, uh, repaid uh, uh, as a debt, and the old co company borrowing would be the first priority to be repaid, right? So that, that is, is that is what right. yeah. And just on the last question, on uh, what's the capex amount which is pending for chlorotoluene? Chlorotoluene, uh, it would be. I don't have the exact number right now, but uh, uh, it would it would not be the uh, uh, big number. So, so the so, so the 300 crores kind of a capex out minus whatever the maintenance capex of 30 40 crores we would have the the block of 250 crores completely would be going towards a new project which we would announce in the coming two months right yeah that's right see yeah it will be around that range will always there will be always a balance of growth capex and debt reduction that has to be balanced in order to ensure that we go to our projected levels of uh, profitability also in the years to come and not to lose the opportunities. So it will not be just uh, directed towards only debt reduction or only towards capers, we'll balance that properly. Perfect, perfect. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we would take that as our last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to convey that long-term story of India remains in fact and current situation is short-term. And looking at the Indian consumption story, we are positive about long-term outlook and we are working towards that. Though our future expansions and diversification in terms of multi products factoring various industries, we are targeting consumption growth. I would like to thank you all for joining us here today. Please feel free to reach our IR if there are still any unanswered questions. Thank you everyone for your participation. Thank you. On behalf of MK Global Financial Services, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You please connect your lines.